Welcome to Hotline TV, I'm Amy Walter. And I'm John Mercurio. Lots of politicians are putting their necks on the line, mm -hmm. endorsing their favorite candidates these days. Well, today we're going to rank the endorsements that may or may not really That's matter so in upcoming primaries, including, I believe, one or two that are taking place today. So let's go to the board, Amy Walter. All right. <clears throat> For my least influential, right. that would be... Well, you uh, got to put yours over there. So oh, excuse me. I'll put my right side on. Uh, Jim DeMint, trying yes. to get some traction here as the outsider endorser, right? right. He's going to be the maverick now, Palin, uh, uh, is endorsed in Indiana, raising money for Stutzman. If Stutzman comes in a distant second, I think it will really question about just how successful he is and get going right. outside of his home state. The problem with the Stutzman endorsement is that there is does seem to be at least a little bit of a split within conservatives in Indiana. Some of them going for Correct. Hostetler, uh, most of them going for Stutzman, but, but, a, but I agree. And even some conservatives going for Dan Coates, so I agree. I think DeMint uh, probably falls short in Indiana, but of course, you know, DeMint uh, was a, a very early endorser of Marco Rubio, so, uh, you know, I think it's 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 not to say that his, uh, his voice doesn't matter in this uh, conversation. What, did DeMint pay you to say that? A little bit, a little right, bit, just right. a little bit. I wish more, but anyway. Mitt Romney making a lot of endorsements these days. Yes. You would think the one place that would have the most resonance is in Utah mm -hmm. for, uh, what do we call him? Uh, Senator Bob Senator Bennett. Senator Bob Bennett. No, but there, there's a better, you know, he's struggling. Struggling, struggling Senator Bob Bennett. I just don't think it is enough. Right. Well, and I agree. You know, I'm sorry that I'm agreeing with you. I hate what? to agree with you, but I, I you do. do. But here we go. Number number two, my my fourth least significant endorsement, also Mitt Romney. Um, also because I don't think that it's ever been proven, documented, that Mitt Romney's ties to the Utah Republican Party are as strong as a lot of people think. He is probably the most... Uh, most prominent, popular, most popular but. Mormon <clears throat> Republican, um, and obviously that helps. But I think at this point, looking at the polls and just following the coverage of Utah, it looks as though Bennett yeah, is so far too late. gone yep. uh, for that race. I agree, just too late. Now, I think McConnell. In, the <sighs> fact that McConnell has actually endorsed is not surprising. Uh, because he's been backing him for a long time. What is interesting is that he's going up on TV. We would think in a year where uh, everybody's trying to be an outsider, why would you want to show the ultimate insider right. as the guy supporting you? But I would argue that McConnell is a very popular guy right. among Republicans in the state. And the question is, is he going to be more popular than Sarah Palin? Well, I, who's endorsed, of course, has endorsed of course, Rand, Rand Paul. Paul. Of course, James Dobson switching his endorsement. I'm following you like nonstop, I'll tell you. I'm really really bummed about this, but I agree. I think McConnell uh, coming in uh, for, for Grayson at this point is a very, very curious choice on his part, of, as Amy mentioned, Sarah Palin, and a lot of other people have endorsed Rand Paul. Rand, Rand Paul is ahead by, what, 20 points now in the polls? So at this point, frankly, it is maybe it's maybe on McConnell's part, it's his way of saying, look, I'm getting in, I'm running this ad at the end as a last minute save. He's got, what, two weeks now until the, right. until the primary. As a last minute save. If I can't save him, then ultimately it was his fault to lose. But McConnell, as Amy mentioned, extremely strong in Kentucky. Never, he's never lost uh, a Senate race, uh, even when it was a very Democratic state. And frankly, he's the one who pulled Jim Bunning across the finish line in two very competitive Senate races. Indeed. Very good point. All right. Are you doing this I'm too? just going to disagree with you on this one. All right. Just for the sake of it. All right. Bill Clinton getting in and endorsing Blanche Lincoln. Again, not a surprise. We already knew he was uh, behind her. Again, this comes to me a little bit like the Romney thing, which is at some point, it, it, her issue, I don't know, is that she's not, that she needs a validator, mm -hmm. like somebody like Bill Clinton, to show that she's a true Democrat, but that she needs to find a way to prove that she's an outsider and right. not part of this big, bad uh, sort of Washington, D.C. system. I don't know if Clinton is the person to help her do that. I'm going to say Obama, number two. Again, right. this is just to be a contrarian. Mm -hmm. Obama, number two, coming in for Arlen Specter, giving him the establishment support. Obviously, Joe Biden from Pennsylvania, or Scranton, his family's from there, um, has been a big help, a big presence in uh, Arlen Specter's campaign. But recent polls, two of them over the past uh, two days, actually show um, Joe Sestek closing the gap. So this could be a much more competitive primary than people think, and Obama's endorsement, the establishment getting behind Arlen Specter, might have been a problem. Um, see, I'm going to argue that uh, Obama, not only uh, his endorsement matters, but I think the real question is going to be how much more will he get involved in this race? Is he right. going to cut an ad for uh, Specter? Is he going to make an actual on the ground? you know, embrace right. of the senator. And I'm just going to put Clinton right up here because I think Bill Clinton, still strong, uh, working for Arlen, for Blanche Lincoln. And I think uh, 
polls have shown that she's actually uh, going to pull this one out. I'm going to put that all on Bill Clinton. Wow. All that's right. A lot of pressure. So you got that there, everybody? Wow. We, we really. That's a lot of work we put into that. That was a lot of work. Thank you also to the Hotline TV staff. All right. Now for our favorite, one of our favorite segments. One of our favorite segments. The bandwagon. Are you on or are you off? Yeah, who have you joined and whose bandwagon have you jumped off over the past couple of days? I'm going to start on a positive note. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, uh, I think Joe Sestak um, is closing the gap. This was always a race that I personally thought was going to be much closer. I thought he had such a great argument, uh, that Sestak had such a good argument to make against Arlen Specter. Democratic primary voters uh, have been going to the polls in November voting against Arlen Specter for generations. So what would change them this, this year? I honestly believe uh, that Sestak is going to close the gap and it's going to be a very close race. All right. I am on the Ed Case bandwagon. It case. looks as if the Democratic establishment has decided they are not willing to just let the two Democrats in the Hawaii special election split the vote, that either the White House may get involved here and show a little love to, this is of course the President's home district, to Ed Case, who Democrats say is the strongest candidate in this race. If that happens, he can, uh, I think he can still pull out it's a win. It's such here. a fascinating thing though, He's, they're pissing off in a way, right. who's basically the kingmaker yeah, yeah, of Hawaii yeah. but, Democratic politics. Right, but at some point, they gotta upend that old system. Oh. That's what they think. Is that, are you calling? Are you calling Inouye an old system? Not at all. He's very young at heart. <clears throat> all right, moving right along. I am going to jump off Lee Fisher's bandwagon. He is a um, on, on, on win or lose. <laughs> win or lose. This has been a disappointing campaign so far. You talk to Democrats uh, in Washington about this race. They're very discouraged by his fundraising, by the fact that he hasn't put away uh, this primary uh, until today. Uh, we've got uh, members of the. We've got DSCC staff calling us. Uh, trying to spin and lower expectations for Fisher coming out of this. Um, and so I think ultimately at the end of the day, he'll probably win the nomination. Who knows? I might be wrong about that. But he, um, at this point, I think looks like it's going to be a tough race this fall against Rob Portman. And I'm off of Neil Abercrombie's bandwagon. Look, if you are the DCCC, you've never been a big fan of the fact that he decided to resign early, which has caused all of this tumult in the special election. The other thing, too, is his decision to retire early, I think, is going to have a big impact on his gubernatorial race at a time when people in Hawaii are being forced, or where the governor is being forced, to um, furlough teachers. Mm -hmm. The idea that the state now has to spend over a million dollars because Neil Abercrombie didn't want to have to go back and forth between and D.C. Forth and Hawaii is going to be very difficult. Interesting. All right. All right, a strong case you made. All right, now for the final segment of our show today, let's take a look at our favorite ad of the week. While millionaire Bill Halter was a highly paid director of a U.S. company, they exported American jobs to Bangalore, India. Bangalore needs many, many jobs. Thank you, Bill Halter. Wow, I mean, as you said yesterday, that's not quite the Jesse Helms <laughs> White Hands ad against Harvey Gantt in 1990. But it's, but it's pretty, pretty darn close. close. And the question is, will it define this race? Right. Or is it going to backfire? We haven't seen any polling since that has been out. Obviously, it's not sponsored by any one of the candidates. This right. just goes to show, once again, that, and I think this is going to be a theme throughout the 2010 election, these outside groups right. are going to be the ones really driving uh, the messages in these elections, despite what the candidates may or may not want them to do. Right, and well, I think, and, and, the, and it's a huge buy, too. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's at least $500,000 being spent in a state like Arkansas can have a big impact. But like you said, I think the fact mm -hmm. that both of the um, candidates, the Democratic candidates, Halter and Lincoln, came out really strongly and condemned the ad uh, minimizes its, its impact in the primary, but we'll see what sort of repercussions it has. Right. It also goes to show one more thing, that outsourcing has become a really, really, really big issue. We're seeing this in a number of ads, including the special in Pennsylvania 12. We're seeing it in Ohio, and now this. Interesting. All right, we are out of time, John. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. But we it's had flown by. We had, we had so much fun here at Hotline TV. Until next time, we'll see you on Hotline TV.